If we take into account of this nature policy, uh, section 2.3.1, terrestrial threats, threats to the terrestrial nature of St. Martin, including invasive fauna, development or conversion of land use, erosion and waste. Historically, the nature of St. Martin was disturbed primarily by activities related to agriculture, breeding of livestock and harvesting of salt. Nowadays, the rapid tourist development and the large and increasing population density mean that nature and the remaining green spaces are experiencing direct threats from spatial development. Approximately 84% of St. Martin's land cover is parceled for private ownership or for long lease purposes. These developments and the accompanying roads are encroaching and excavating higher into the hills and threatening the remaining untouched habitats such as seasonal evergreen forests leading to habitat loss, fragmentation, and deterioration, as well as increasing the incidences of erosion, landslides, and water management complications. Due to these developmental pressures, it is unsure if the same number of plant species exist today, and especially the current status of the two endemic plant species is unknown. Development in the hills also threatens the habitat of St. Martin's endemic Anguilla Bank Bush Anole. So, Taking that account, um, that section of the nature policy into consideration, where the risk of commercial development is explicitly outlined, um, I find myself asking the same question I asked when we were discussing the spatial development policy, strategy, whatever. Um, because I asked in that meeting last year, I think, or 2022, is there or has there been any consideration given to pausing the granting of large-scale commercial building permits um, for any large-scale development, actually, commercial, residential, et cetera? Um, because at the time when I asked that question, it was because, you know, not hitting the pause button while you're working on a nature policy and a spatial development policy strategy slash plan is essentially like painting a house while it's still under construction. And um, the response I got was that no, that had not been a consideration. That was the response I got in Parliament. The response that I got um, outside of Parliament via the media was that it was crazy to stop uh, you know, development because that would stop the economy. There's precedence for this already, right? How deep is the channel? How fast is the channel? To Anguilla, where they paused for 24 months the exact same large-scale developments to prevent exactly this terrestrial threat scenario that is in this nature policy. So I'm just wondering how policy lines up with action by the respective ministry, because it's not just the Ministry of Rami that has this conundrum um, on its plate. So I just, I remember last time asking a question regarding the underwater museum and what was granted for that underwater museum to exist. And it was my understanding that we granted a lease for the seafloor, so the seabed, as we would call it. And I was just wondering if when that was done, if it was taken into consideration what was going to be put in to the nature policy, because the nature policy is talking about how we protect our waters, you know, like so that animal, like so basically plant life, animal life can thrive. But I just don't understand the link with a nature policy of protecting when you have underwater museum that has plastics on it still that are not actually going to be an additional, positive addition to the thriving environment there. So I just, that was it. Very simple. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Minister D, um, is it possible to provide some type of status on the implementation of this policy as is required in accordance with the law, um, the before September 1st date. But specifically, I would like to know if there's any status that can be reported on as to the execution of this policy for the year 2023. Anything to report that has been executed on the basis of the nature policy, St. Martin. <coughs> Secondly, Minister, I believe it was in your absence when I asked about the material that has been dumped at the Belia Beach. And in your absence, the answer was given that the material has been dumped there to be subsequently taken away. The material has not yet been taken away. And if the minister can please go into that question in terms of who dumped it, and is it still the intention to have it removed from that location? Can the minister provide an update as well as the recent consultation slash implementation as far as the hillside policy is concerned? 
D the can the minister elucidate what policy is followed by the government when it comes to consulting with the Nature Foundation on projects on St. Martin's. So is it at the discretion of the ministry to decide today we request uh, an advice or a consultation with the Nature Foundation on Project X, but tomorrow it mightn't be necessary, or is there a line, is there a policy that is followed with respect to consultation with the Nature Foundation for projects and the and that the, minist the ministry follows uh, a particular line in this respect? Is it based on the size? Is it based on the discretion? So what exactly is it, given the fact that there is a SLA with Nature Foundation as far as that communication is concerned? I delve into the first question slash query by MP Gums with respect to um, doing a pause on large developments, whether commercial or residential. Um, one of the issues where that is concerned, especially after doing research with the department, um, persons own their land. Persons have their, their private land, and it's quite difficult to tell someone what they can and cannot do with their land if they want to build a home and or build a, a, a commercial complex to enhance the quality of their life for them and their families. So there's nothing that we have in place that can block someone legally from executing things of that nature or building on their, on their property. Um, of course, if someone is not in accordance with our building code, then we can, do inf we can enforce and or tell them they have to correct certain things on their building plans. But to do a building stop it's uh, quite uh, extreme, unless I'm understanding the Member of Parliament in another form or fashion. I move on to the question posed by MP De Weaver with respect to um, the underwater museum. Um, reg regulations and, and, and rules, conditions were placed in the, the lease agreement that the persons had to adhere to when it comes to nature. and. Once, I believe, the plastic was noticed in one of the inspections, which the inspection department was notified, and I just have to verify how that was addressed. I move on to questions posed by MP Westcott. Can you report on what has been conducted on the Nature Policy Plan up to 2023? I have a few points. The Corena Project, which is the baseline terrestrial and marine biodiversity assessment, the bird platform with the Nature Foundation, the vegetation report by Karmabai, 2022, the invasive species project undertaken by the Nature Foundation, and ongoing work to establish Little Key as a nature park. I move on to the question by MP Westcott with regards to the hillside policy. The hillside policy is being implemented With respect to the Nature Foundation, um, once we have projects that um, more than likely have to do with uh, vegetation or, or beaches, they are nine times out of 10 um, consulted, especially when we deal with, um, let's say, like I mentioned, beachside property or any property that's close to the water. But they're also consulted in different areas as well. So there's no um, obligation for the department departments to consult with the Nature Foundation, but we have a working agreement, which most of the time they are consulted, and especially when it has to do with uh, large developments. With respect to the court verdict, yes, the court verdict will be uh, provided. I guess it was an oversight by the ministry at the time. Regarding the issue of the old bridge in Simpson Bay, um, Yesterday, I received communication from the Ministry of Education, particularly the Cultural Department, and they are busy with the Inspection Department and CAPSM to enforce because they are of the opinion, based on what they've seen, that the 
monument is being compromised. No permit was issued, so that is being handled as we speak. That is all the information I have on that subject at this point. And with regards to the other points and queries, I would like to provide those in writing as I don't have the answers readily available. SFV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SFV is cardless. Request your My SFV account today and enter the virtual office of SFV. Go to SFV.SX and sign up now. SFV, yeah. your social health insurance. document, uh, you will see in the introduction that Country St. Martin uh, has been trying to have this law passed for the last 21 years. So it's been 21 years uh, since we had that first initiative to have a law or an ordinance on higher education. Uh, before it was called tertiary education, then it was called the ordinance, national ordinance on higher education. And uh, thanks to uh, the revisions that were made uh, based upon uh, consultation with the community, uh, we now have a national ordinance on higher education and scientific research. So I invite all the members of parliament uh, to review this document. Uh, that clearly explains our motives for suggesting changes and amendments to the Land for Ordeninga. I'd like to start off um, by uh, recognizing that uh, USM uh, is the main institution of higher education and scientific research on the island of St. Martin. We serve not only uh, students from this side of the Concordia border, but the entire island, but also our sister islands of Seba, Asintustasias. Board and management of USM uh, believes that it is not enough to mention USM in the Memorie van Toelichting, but we kindly ask the members of parliament to consider having USM mentioned within the law itself. And so we have provided here an Article X, adding the number uh, that will be adopted, um, that will recognize um, USM uh, as the main institution of higher education, uh, just like any other country within the Caribbean part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. So the article we've provided here, the suggested amendment, we've provided here in both English and Dutch, uh, in order to save time and, and work. Uh, I know it would have to be reviewed, um, but we are asking for USM to be recognized um, as a special institution operating in the form of a legal entity uh, with full legal capacity uh, that should be funded at a minimum of 80% by and on behalf of the country. Next. If this is not possible, if this is not desirable to add a new article, uh, we would like to suggest an alternative to a new article to this legislative piece. Um, and we've provided uh, this 
uh, by suggesting uh, an amendment to Article 93, uh, which would read as uh, Article 93, Section 12. And again, we have it in both Dutch and English. Um, and that amendment would read, by national decree containing general measures and appendix listing funded and non-funded institutions for higher education and science is included, including USM. And so that it would just require um, uh, that the parliament would, uh, would, would add or approve um, an appendix, appendix to this law, to the ordinance rather. Thank you. As far as uh, tuition is concerned, the costs uh, associated with higher education, um, we go back, uh, look at our suggestion to Article 8.1. Um, above, you will see uh, the legislative piece as it is uh, currently written. And then we have a suggestion um, whereby um, the government would require a contribution from the student towards the costs associated uh, with their study. And uh, the amount of the tuition fees uh, should be sub subjugated to regulations by national ordinance and containing measures in consultation with the institution. We believe that it is uh, necessary uh, to um, create a sphere based on this legislation uh, where, again, USM is not seen as a client but a partner uh, of government, um, and so that any changes uh, in the fees and the tuitions that will affect, of course, our student body, um, that that be done in consultation with uh, the institution, the concerned institution, in this case being USM. <clears throat> We have uh, also suggested uh, changes to Article 9, more specifically 9.2, Section 2, uh, where previously, um, or as the legislative piece is written now, the minister can recognize the request for a special program and request funds or a fee for same. Um, we uh, would advocate for eliminating Section 2 of Article 9 um, uh, because uh, it is our understanding that the government of country St. Martin does not intend on having a public accreditation bureau. Um, so in this case, USM would have to pay for recognition accredit or accreditation for all new programs. Um, an additional required fee would be on us on our small institution. SFV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SFV is cardless. Request your My SFV account today and enter the virtual office of SFV. Go to SFV.SX and sign up now. SFV! Yeah. Your social health insurance. Life's twists, turns, and defining moments. RBC is a plan for all of you. The Red 
the opschortende voorwaarden, so the, the suspensive conditions in regards to this agreement. And the, the, the most important part, I think, um, is that parliament has to agree to it. So St. Martin Parliament and Curaçao Parliament needs to agree to the Hoofdlijnen Accord Resolution of Enya. So if that can also be clarified that that's the case. Um, other than that, um, I would like to know to you, Madam Chair, um, what the reason is that um, the law that is app um, applicable to this agreement is the law of Curaçao, and why not St. Martin, why that was uh, chosen, and also the, the, the judge um, that will be able to look at the case if it comes to a legal procedure is the, the, the court of Curaçao. Why wasn't it, for example, chosen the joint court of justice so that all islands, um, and then also St. Martin, um, could file a court case in St. Martin and not let us go through Curaçao. Um, that was also a question of mine. And then if I look at um, other detailed question, is that I would like to know that um, based on my research then, the central bank has not been able to generate sufficient income to pay the dividends. Um, and what guarantee through you, Madam Chair, can the minister give that the dividends can be paid from 2025 up to the amount of the 3 million guilders per year? Um, and what happens if it, the central bank is unable to pay the dividends? I, um, how will this shortfall um, will be covered? I saw the inspanning verplichting, but um, if that is not, um, if they're not able to make that, what will then happen? Um, I didn't see that in the agreement, but it's possible that I maybe have missed it. Um, also, in regards to the um, the dividends, I uh, read that about 15 million will go to the resolution fund, and about three to St. Martin. And what's the reasoning behind this? And what part of the dividend is Curacao entitled to? Um, those are my questions for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this goes back to what I said um, regarding the governance of the resolution fund. Four people, um, two from Curacao, one from the central bank, which MP Emanuel is not wrong, can also, will probably be someone from Curacao, um, and one from St. Martin. If they're at a deadlock to sell one of the participations, what then? So just from a governance perspective, I really want to understand the logic um, and the reasoning behind this four-man um, supervisory board that, can have to, that has to give their approval first before the management foundation can sell. And also, maybe a touchy question, um, is there a written or unspoken agreement that persons that had a hand in bringing us here are forbidden to be one of these supervisory directors? Because if I see certain persons who I know were part of the advisory committee in Curacao, on this matter, um, as part of that. Anyway, um, so that's number one. And um, number two, uh, what, at the end of the agreement it's mentioned, as is with normal with these types of deals, that uh, it's subject to regulatory approval. So I believe that um, as this progresses, there have been discussions with the reg relevant regulatory bodies. I did see that Aruba Central Bank has not yet really given approval for the transfer of the post-emergency liabilities and other assets from the Aruba section um, to be transferred. So what happens if for some reason a regulatory body holds back the execution of this facility? Um, what happens to the interest rate and the finance loans that we have been made to understand are contingent on this um, facility and this um, solution? So that's it for me for now, Madam Chair, and I thank you very much. Minister, I have only a few uh, questions for you. The first question I have is, if there has been other ways that has been explored to see if we could have a pension regulation for the only 3,000 uh, clients that were affiliated to the Enya insurance company. So actually it's only 3,000. My question is all of a sudden everybody rushed as my colleague members of parliament said, to rush to sign a resolution for the survival of Enya. While as Mr. MP Emmanuel said, we are losers in this deal. And what is the reason that we rushed still in the direction of a organization that has, been, has proven to fail 
in guaranteeing continuity for the people of St. Martin. I do not understand the agenda that we all rushed into trying to save a Enya that actually was not beneficial for the people of St. Martin. That's the first question. Secondly, uh, the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin had for a few years the oversight over Enya. My question is now, who is now overseeing the functioning of the Central Bank of Curaçao in St. Martin in these cases. So we, everybody realized that the controlling function of the Central Bank and oversight function has failed. This same Central Bank now is dictating to us in big pictures in the newspaper how we have to sign a resolution for everybody to get out of the problems. But who is in this organization now in this structure in which Central Bank is a, is a partner, who is now keeping the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin accountable for what has happened in their agreed function to oversee what was going on in the area for a few years? Do we have as Minister of Finance, for example, a authority to question the functioning of the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin in this case? A third question I have is the, the role of the Parliament of St. Martin. Can the Minister, through Madam Chair, explain me what the value is of the signed resolution in a country that your Parliament, that carries the government, in case disagrees with has, what has been done in signing a resolution without approval of Parliament? What does that mean that something that actually is going to commit the country for the coming 30 years at least? What is now the role of Parliament as is stated that Parliament must agree to carry this resolution? What will be the case if Parliament disagrees with a document that has, has already been signed? I'm a little worried with the commitment of Enya as such to continue trying to look in that direction to give continuity to financial aid in, for example, pensions for the people of St. Martin. And why do I say that? In 2021, a settlement agreement has been made with the workers of the towers via uh, the Sun Resorts that is also from that angle of the owners. And until today, in that settlement agreement of 2021 for the workers of Towers, no penny has been paid to the workers. And again, although the fact that we have been in deficit in our responsibility to pay out the agreement that has been made with the workers of the Towers in 2021, today we are running to the same group of people again, keeping them alive hoping that they're going to keep up their agreement that they made in this resolution. So for everybody to think that we still have the workers of the towers still waiting on the commitment that has been made in 2021 for the settlement that has been made for them that until today has not been paid.